Well, let's get into the serious business. Uh, first of all, Mac Andrew is the story of the day, broken on Nine News tonight by Tom Morris, of course, the journalist of the year at the AFL Media Association last year, and a firm favourite to go back to back. And he's with us right now, Tommy. Right, what's going on? This is a huge story on so many levels. Yep. Go. Ed, this is the biggest deal in AFL history if you take it in its entirety. So, Mac Andrew has signed a nine year contract extension worth, I believe, to be upwards of $12 million. That takes him to the end of 2034. Now, it's important to understand he's already locked in for next year. So, this deal runs from 2026 to 2030. If he plays 60 games in that window, that will trigger another four years beyond that. So assuming he does, that's a nine-year contract extension worth more than $12 million. Great news for the Suns, even better news for Mac Andrew. So, Tom, uh, I think it's five years and then that option comes into yep. play. Is this, like the American terms, a player option? So is he still technically a free agent after five years? He's only a free agent after five years if he doesn't hit the trigger. If he hits the trigger, it automatically rolls into another four seasons. Was there a particular club, Tom, that was coming that hard that's just forced the Suns to make a deal this big? Yeah, I think there was. I think there were a number of clubs that were really keen. Hawthorne was keen. Melbourne was extremely yeah. keen. I'm sure there were others as well. Any club with money. But in the end, Mac Andrew wanted to stay at the Gold Coast Suns. They wanted to lock him in long term. And the two parties came to an agreement, which was announced tonight. So, boys, let me get the football side of things first. And then we'll get to the marketing, because there's such an upside on the marketing for the AFL, for the Gold Coast Suns. As a player, what do you think of this play? Uh, amazing upside, huge potential. But he also has been dropped a few times for disciplinary reasons. He was in the VFL to start the season. So, no, I can only imagine what, uh, you know, some other players, whether it's Jeremy Cameron or, you know, somebody, I'm just trying to think of the well, best young up-and-coming. What's you know? it do for Harley Reid, Tom? When, yeah. when, when you then line these numbers up with uh, the number one draft pick and the already established midfielder of the West Sam Coast Darcy Eagles. as well. Th these are the sort of numbers we're talking about now. So we need to get our heads around it. No, no longer is it Buddy Franklin, 10 million over nine. This is 1.4, 1.5, 1.7 million dollars a year for a number of AFL players on the horizon as we speak. This could be uh, a, a world record record contract for about five minutes. Yeah, there could be two more. and then it, yeah. Seriously, there could be two more. Mm -hmm. Sam Darcy, yeah. exactly. And as you said, Harley Reid. And the then next Chad Warner as well. Um, Chad Warner. And, 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 and the other element here as well is the longest deal in the AFL. Mm -hmm. So yeah. currently Aaron Norton, Sam Taylor uh, and Connor Rosie at 2032. This beats it by two years, Jimmy. Well, it's the Sam Darcy element for me. It's the uniqueness of the player. And I know you can keep going back to the draft and getting a midfielder, but we still don't actually know what Mac Andrew is. Is he a half-back flanker? Is he centre-half back? Is he going to be ruck? Is he going to be a forward? And I guess they're paying for that uniqueness and potential. For the Gold Coast, though, to have somebody like this as a, a, such an exciting player and to commit with Damien Hardwick, it is enormous from the AFL's push into that area. And as a South Sudanese uh, boy from his origin as well, it is amazing. I mean, what that will do now for the African community, knowing that football, Australian rules football, is their home in Australia. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I, I think, you know, the uh, South Sudanese boys and the African boys from the Horn of Africa will have as big an impact as what African players made in the NBA in due course. Yeah. I'm starting yeah. to see it roll through. It is, I agree it is amazing. I agree with you. But you also have made the point on this show. You take a big deal like this, yeah. the pressure that goes on players mm -hmm. to perform, and, and everyone will be talking about, gee, he's now a, a one million plus player. Let's see how he handles it. OK, Tom, we've just got news through. Callum Mills of the Sydney Swans. Now, it's interesting. Callum is going to be our special guest here tonight. Right. And we got the call today saying uh, he, he can't quite come on. There's something on. And it's not like the Sydney Swans to do that type of thing. So we're a bit sceptical of what was going on. You can tell us what's happening. Yeah, Callum Mills, this is unfortunate news. He's hurt his hamstring at training yesterday. The Sydney Swans have just a few minutes ago ruled him out from a preliminary final date in a couple of weeks. And crucially... They haven't confirmed that he'd be available for a grand final yet. So this is clearly a concern for them. And it's a blow for the Swans as well. It's his left hamstring that he hurt yesterday. So 21 days minimum hamstring. Yeah. Um, he's obviously had an interrupted uh, season because of the shoulder injury that he had at uh, Mad Monday yeah. last year. Um, it's been a bit of a horror year for Callum Mills, hasn't it, in so many ways? Yeah, it has. And the form, again, expectedly was taking time for him. Even he wasn't good in the most recent match, the, the qualifying final win the other day against GWS. So now we've got a hamstring issue to tell. And, and Lordy, you just did the maths before we came on air. There's not enough runway for him to come back from a hamstring. No, it's under 21 days. Grand final days in 17 days. Yeah. And, and I think they won't want a charade or a circus as well on grand final week going, is he in, is he out? So it wouldn't surprise me if they win the 
the prelim and rule him out straight away. Because he played in his first season, the 2016 grand final, with a hamstring complaint. Got through it and played okay, but he went into it with a, yeah. with a problem. And what it does do, it opens up a door potentially for Taylor Adams, Eddie, who of course missed out in the, fi- in the first final.